everyone, it's me, Darlene. I am back with my selvage block that I just made in my previous video. I will link to that video down below if you haven't watched it yet. Run and watch it and never throw away another selvage. I mentioned in that video that I might be putting this up as one of my eBay penny auctions. Auctions that start at a penny, free shipping for USA. And I decided that I would rather use this in a little project. So we're going to make a hot mat, hot pad, whatever you call it, just something to put a hot pot on. Or you can, you know, put it on your table to put a casserole dish or whatever. I just thought it would be a good size. So we're going to do that right now. You do not need to start with a block like this. You can just cut a square of fabric. You can use a heavier fabric if you'd like maybe some denim from an old pair of jeans, whatever you want. You cut a square, whatever size you like. And then you're going to need some batting. And this happens to be 100% cotton. I just got an entire bolt of it. I love it so much just looking at it. I feel like I won mega bucks or something by seeing that in my house. <laughs> You do not have to use 100% cotton for the batting. You can use the cotton poly blend or you can use polyester. It's not going to melt because you're going to be putting the pot on cotton. You do want 100% cotton for the top. You don't want something that will melt, some synthetic fabric. But, but as for the batting, it's okay to have polyester there. I was just going to complete this without doing any quilting, but I think I will do some quilting. I don't really want to stitch in the ditch because I never can quite make it in the ditch and then it's distracting. So I think I'll just follow my line and I'm just going to sew like a quarter of an inch in both directions on both sides of the line and then that will kind of hold it together. Let me go do that. I will be right back. All right, I got that done and it looks cool. And you might be saying, but Darlene, you didn't put the backing on. If you're gonna quilt as you go, you need the backing also. I didn't really do it because I want everything to be stuck together. I did it because I thought I would really like the lines and it does hold the batting down, but I didn't really want those lines on the back. So now I'm going to trim this and get rid of this excess batting. Memory card just got full and I think I had the wrong setting for the lighting. I hope I have it right this time. My little block ended up being seven and a half inches square. So I need my backing to be two inches larger all the way around. So if you're doing a rectangle shape like for a placemat, same thing goes. Whatever size your block is, you're going to want your backing to be two inches wider and two inches taller. So I cut a piece of muslin. This is muslin that I've had for a bit, but it's a little bit heavier than I wanted for like quilting, which is why I haven't used any of it. <laughs> it's going to be good as a backing for this project. And then you can just eyeball it if it's a square or you can measure to see if you have like an inch all the way around. I'm good with eyeballing. We're going to just fold up. You can finger press and then fold up again. You can put a pin if you want. I'm just going to press that. Actually, I will put a pin because that makes more sense. That'll hold that down. Now I'm going to turn it. So when you fold, you know, you're going to be folding like almost up to your fabric. But this time now, we need to deal with this funky corner. So let me press this first. This corner, we're going to, let me see if I can zoom you in. Come on and zoom, zoom, zoom on, zoom. Oh my God, such talent I have, such camera skills. Where the hell are you? I don't know how to move it. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. First I fold it and press it just to get my line. Then I open this up and I'm just going to fold this guy like that. See what I did? I just, you know, folded it to match the edge. 
And then I can fold that up, and then we can fold this whole guy up. What the hell is there? You know, if it doesn't match up perfectly, well, it's probably not going to, because I don't know how to teach you things. <laughs> because I don't do it right either. I'm okay with that. I'm going with that. I'm going to pin that right there. Good. I'm good with that. Let me put another pin over here. Some people use a glue stick. I really do need to get a glue stick because uh, you can use glue sticks to hold stuff down. Let's back up again. Whoops. See, told you I don't know what I'm doing. Same thing. You can fold this at this point. Let's see. Let's fold that up. Yeah. I could probably adjust that as I'm sewing if I care to. I'm going to put a pin there and a pin down here. Now for the last side, we need to fold twice. I mean, both corners. We have to fold this corner. This is where glue comes in handy because you can just tack it down. I wonder if I can just put a pin in there for a moment just to kind of keep that there. And then this side has to go the other way. See, just folding it in like you're folding the edge of a package and then fold up until you almost are up to your block. I'm going to just finger press and up. Let's see how that looks. I'm taking this pin out now. Ooh, that looks good. I think I did good. Like that. And let's see this side. That looks pretty good too. I think I did a fine job for not having done this since I was like in seventh or eighth grade is when I learned how to do this. I got a little kink here. I'll take care of that when I'm at the sewing machine. And then you're just going to go and sew all the way around very close to the edge, like maybe an eighth of an inch. And then I'll be right back. I'm giving myself an A just for the sake of attempting it. A for attempt. <laughs> I'm going to give myself maybe like a B minus for the final product because my corners are a little bit funky on two sides. See, they started to like open up a little bit. Look, I haven't done this for years, so I'm okay with it. But one thing I'm going to do, oh, and I wanted to mention that when I started sewing, I just started on the side. I didn't come in because I didn't want a stitch line going off this, so I just started and uh, went around and then stopped. Just did a little back tack. But I think because my corners are popping a little bit, I'm going to go around again one more time just to make sure that that doesn't come undone there. I mean, I don't think it would, but it could. Let me do that. I like it better with the two lines that are very crooked, I think. <laughs> I might give myself a C plus. But I'm happy I tried it. Again, I haven't done this for years. This will be a penny auction now, and you'll probably just want to bid only a penny. No, I'm just kidding. It's going to function just fine. Now see, look at the back. I like it. I didn't want those crisscross lines in the back. I just wanted this. So I like it very much. Give it a try. You know, I think with not such thick fabric, the muslin was really kind of heavy and a little bit on the stiff side. I think I would have done a much better job with the corners. So it gives me a chance to continue to do this and do it enough times to the point where I just can do it magically without even really thinking about it. And I wanted to say that I know some of you are screaming at me, you didn't do it right. There's probably five different ways to do the corners when you're using the backing as the binding. And uh, I did it the way that I learned when I was like 12 years old. So you can do it your way. I did it this way. There is no right way or wrong way. Just do it any way you can think of, even if nobody showed you a certain way. Make something up and try it. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!